Damon Thornton, the scripture that he gave you, uh, Mark 5, please maintain that scripture because our sermon is coming from that scripture. Um, Mark, Gospel of St. Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 27 through 34. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. She said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole in thy play. I want to use for a subject today when the issue has become a problem. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and redeemer, and all God's people said, Amen. Church issue is an important topic or problem for debate or discussion. Where a problem is a harmful and unwelcome matter or situation that needs to be dealt with. In church, I know that all of us have had, will have, or do have issues that be become or have become a problem. Our issues and problems vary. Some of them are long-term situations. They're not going away right away. They're long-term. They are things that will be there. However, some people deal with the same thing that they should have gotten rid of a long time ago. While there are issues that won't go right away, there are issues that you should have gotten rid of a long time ago. In our word, we made some choices. In our own words, we made choices. We've said things that cause problems. We have been snared by the words that we speak. So sometimes it's our own words that have caused us issues. We made those choices. And then sometimes there are certain situations and choices that we make that give us issues and problems. We want to avoid certain things, but life has a way of beating us up, causing us to do things that we may not have wanted to do but we ended up doing, realizing that the issue has now become a problem. There are some problems that we have gotten into due to circumstances. The circumstance could have been a family problem. It could have been a problem with your job. It could have been a relationship problem or it even could have been a church problem. Amen. Either way, we have had problems, issues. In some cases, people share similar problems and issues. They may not be exactly the same, but they are similar. And you want these things to go away, but sometimes they just won't go away. 
So let's look at our text in Mark, the fifth chapter, back at verses 27 and 34. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? I could do a sermon just from that right there. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng thee, and saith thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her, and had that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. He said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of the plague. Here in our text, we see this woman who is dealing with an issue that has become a problem. She, she has been dealing with this thing for quite some time. She has a problem that seems that it will not go away. And in this book, we don't know what her name is. We don't know if she had an occupation or not. We don't know really where she's from, but we do know that she is a woman known by the title of the woman with the issue of blood. I have a question for you today, church. With all the titles that people gain throughout this world, what title are you known as? Are you known by your issue, your problems, or are you known for something positive that goes on in your life? Are you known as the person who is a wife abuser? Are you known as the person who is a spouse abuser? Are you known as the person who is a drug addict? Are you known as the person who is homeless? Are you known as the person who is a hypocrite? What? are you known by? What's the title that they call you when your issue becomes a problem? This sickness kept this woman isolated. She had a flow of blood coming from her womb. And Leviticus law stated that if she had this flow, blood, this menstrual, if you will, that she was to be separated from everyone for that period of time. And anything that she set on would have to be discarded, burned, done away with. But this woman had this issue for 13 long years. Some of the other gospels tell us it was 13 long years. Can you imagine being isolated, separated for all of these years, having to be by yourself? If you had a spouse, there's no relationship. Because Leviticus law said that he had to be away from her. She was on her own. 
She had been dealing with this issue that had become a problem. This issue of blood, this thing that wouldn't go away, this thing that has her isolated and separated. Have you ever felt isolated and separated because of your issues, because of your problems? You might be around a lot of people. You might talk to people on a daily basis. But deep on the inside, you feel isolated and separated. Yeah. You might communicate with your neighbors. But deep on the inside, you feel isolated and separated. This woman had this issue for a long time. I'm wondering how we would deal with that issue. I'm wondering if our spouses, those that are husbands, if you had a wife, if she had an issue of blood, 12, 13, 14, 15 years, would she still be your spouse? That's a long time. And that's something to think about. I wonder, those of you that are dealing with your spouse, the issue that they have, how long have you been dealing with that issue? How long have you wanted that thing to go away? This woman realizes that this issue is not being cured by the doctor. And so she realizes one day, she hears that Jesus is passing by. And she decides to break the, the, the tradition and go and find her heel. There are times when we will have to break tradition in order to get closer to God. You know the traditions that we have in the church, and not all traditions are bad, but there are some things that are just tradition. Sometimes you have to go against the traditional doing of things in order to get your healing from God. You're going to have to do something different. This woman, she was sick of the blood flow. She was tired of the blood flow. She was considered an unclean woman, if you will. And she decided that I'm going to make my way to Jesus. Some of the other gospel says that she says within herself that if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'll be made whole. And so everybody knew who she was because they knew her as the woman with the issue of blood. And so she sees Jesus and she begins to make her way through the crowd. Can you imagine the people seeing her Knowing who she was, knowing that she had this problem, this issue of blood, and she was considered unclean, and she's making her way through the crowd, and people are seeing her, and can you imagine them shutting her, stepping to the side, getting out of the way, because they realize that she is considered unclean. But she says, I'm going to break the tradition. I know I'm not supposed to touch anybody. I know that anything I touch is supposed to be considered unclean. But I'm going to touch this man named Jesus because the doctors haven't done what I need them to do. But I hear that Jesus is able to do what doctors can't do. Amen. I heard that he changed water into wine. I heard that he healed the blind man. I heard that he caused a dumb person, a person who could not speak, to speak. So I'm going to take my chance. And I'm going to touch his clothes. 
And so she broke the tradition. And she went out and touched the hem of him. And he knew it when she did it. Immediately she received healing, but Jesus felt power, virtue, healing come from his body, different from everyone else. Amen. Jesus turns and he sees her. He's, he's looking and he says, and then as he's looking, he sees her, the one who touched him. And he knew that it was her because she touched him different than everyone else. She wanted a closer relationship with God. And I want to ask you the question, are you trying to touch God? Are you trying to touch God so that he could make that thing that people talk about you about go away? Are you trying to get a relationship with God that when you touch him, he knows that you're touching him? How do you touch him? You touch him in prayer. You touch him in meditation. You touch him in your sincerity. When you reach out to touch him and you are sincere, when you are for real, when you reach out to touch him, he will know that you touch him because he will be able to feel something different about your touch than everybody else. Because everybody's calling on the name of the Lord. But the Bible even tells us that not everyone who calls on his name at that judgment day shall be accepted into his kingdom. So there's a lot of people calling on the name of the Lord. But you're going to have to call him differently that when you call him, you're going to know him. People use God's name in vain all the time. OMG has become a thing to say now. Oh my God. Oh my God. People just call on God. But when you call on God, it should be a difference in the way you call him that when he looks around, when you call him, he knows that there's something different about your call. Amen. Touch God so you make him stop and talk to you. Touch God where when everybody else is thronging, you make him stop, look around, talk to you. Amen. You ever had something going on and you prayed in such a way that you know that God stopped and paid attention to you? But well, don't tell me that God won't do it. God will take time for you by yourself. Amen. He'll stop and look at you and deal with you. It's, I'm so glad that I know him like that. That whatever's going on in my life, when I call him, and I call him for real, and I call him sincerely, God will open his ear to my cry and hear my call. Because he's hearing when I call. He's hearing when you call. And if you want a close relationship with him, I dare you to start talking to him a little bit more. I dare you to reach out to him. I dare you to try to touch him. And if you touch him, he will be there standing there to heal your situation. He will be there standing to cure your situation. So what do you do when your issue becomes a problem? What do you do when you try it all you can try? Scripture showed us that she went to Jesus. She knew that no earthly resolve could help her. So she realized that she needed a miracle from Jesus. She realized that she needed Jesus to cure her problem. So she pressed her way 
to Jesus. When your issues become problems, one of the things you need to do is press your way to Jesus. Everything is trying to keep you from touching Jesus. Can you imagine this woman? People knowing what her situation was. They're talking about it. You know they're talking about it. Who, what is she doing? What is she doing? You mean to tell me she's going to go and put her hands on a man? What is she doing? But she doesn't care. She is going out of her way to make sure she gets her miracle for her problem. And she presses through the crowd. Sometimes you got to press through all the voices. You got to press through all the naysayers. You got to press through all the doubt. You got to press through all those things, those evil forces, those principalities that are coming against you. You got to press through and make your way to Jesus. Nobody told you that this road was going to be easy. You got to keep pressing. And I wonder if you learn how to press. If you learn how to press, just if you're sitting beside anybody, tell them I learned how to press. I, I learned how to press. If you're all by yourself, just say, thank God I learned how to press. We're getting ready. Eventually get back into the building that we call church and worship. Not yet. We're going to be smart. We understand that the COVID-19 that was an issue, we're going to make sure it don't become our problem. But when we get healed from this disease, this plague, you're going to have to press your way out. You have to press yourself up off of that bed. You have to press yourself up off of that couch because you've been pressed in it for quite some time. When you get pressed in something so long, sometimes you got to press your way out. And when we got to get closer to Jesus, got to get in the fellowship with one another, you're going to have to press your way like this woman did. She pressed her way. She pressed away so that she could find her healing. So she pressed away to Jesus. Then she realized that she had to have faith. She had to have faith, enough faith to believe that if she could touch his priestly garments, if she could touch the tassels of his garments, if she could just touch any part of the hem of him, she realized that it would be the answer to her problems. Some of us have not pressed through the situation because we feel like God is angry with us. I'm talking to somebody. You feel like all the mistakes that you made that God is too angry with you to heal you. And so Satan tells you, Satan, the evil one, he tells you not to get your heal. So he puts you in a guilt and shame trip. And because you feel guilty and ashamed, your issue has become a problem and you won't press your way to God. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Even if God is angry with you, the only one that can bring you peace is God. Amen. See, if, if other people get angry with you, you can take them to Jesus. If you got the law angry with you, you can take it to Jesus. If the principalities, the rulers of darkness, of this world, Satan himself, get angry with you, you can take it to Jesus. Yeah. But when God is angry with you, you gotta still go 
to him through Jesus. He is the one that is able to heal and cure your situation. So you got to say, get off of me, guilt. Get off of me, shame. I'm going to make my way. I'm going to press my way to Jesus. I'm going to get up in his face and I'm going to ask him for forgiveness and I'm going to ask him for healing because I need you right now. Press your way. One thing I learned about even if God is angry with you, his anger is only but a moment. But his favor is for a lifetime. Thank God that he doesn't deal with anger like we deal with anger. God is a righteous God. And he deals with it perfectly. He knows everything about you. So push your shame and guilt to the side and make your way to Jesus. Push your shame and guilt to the side. And when you're able to get back into a place of worship, get yourself back into a place of worship. I don't care if you was taking off your clothes and dancing on a pole. Get yourself back to Jesus. I don't care if you were hustling some drugs. Get yourself back to Jesus. I don't care what you did. If you come to Jesus and touch him, he will know that you touch him because virtue will leave him and come into you and will heal you and he will know that you are truly his disciple. Amen. When your issues become problems, take them to Jesus can't deal with that by yourself. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. And run with patience the race that is set before us. Run to him for your heal. Imagine if the woman with the issue of blood would have not broke the tradition. She would still have been bleeding until the day she died. She may have even had an earlier death. And I want somebody out there to know don't die in that, that thing. Take it to Jesus. Whatever it is, get, get yourself to Jesus. If you, if you get to him, he's there. Arms wide open. And he said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden. You're heavy with labor. You're heavy with burdens. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is my life. You come to Jesus with your issues that have become problems. If you take the issue before it becomes a problem to Jesus, he's able to even cure that. So if you don't know the Lord is your Savior, pray this prayer with me. Lord, forgive me for all my sins. Come into my life and save me. Be Lord of my life. Be my Savior. God, I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit, which will help me and keep me and comfort me and draw me under conviction when I am wrong to get me back on the right track. If you prayed that prayer, if you prayed it with a sincere heart, you're saved. So make the declaration. I'm saved. I'm a child of the Lord. I will become his disciple. That means that you're going to follow his way. You're going to get into the word. You're going to stay dedicated to Jesus Christ. He is our door to the Father. He is our door to every good and perfect gift because it comes from God. In the 
name of Jesus, amen.